Come on now. Reel in that fish. Go get him. Three or four pounder. Slide in the fish buggers. I'll never know how it turns out. Perhaps the fish escaped. Perhaps the fish did not escape. Jeez Louise! Now, who the heck are you? I am Pat. Who the heck are you? Jan Bathgate. Good morning, Jan Bathgate. Would you like to perform the copulatory act with me? The what? Copulation, coitus, regeneration. The sexual act. The sex, huh? Did my wife put you up to this? She's always laying traps. No traps, no wife. Just sex. Okay. That's it then. Tried everything. Couldn't even get the cartoons this morning. Life was so depressed, you just sat there staring up at the ceiling. Uh, every TV in town's on the Fritz list. <sighs> but I know it's something with the TV retransmission tower. Well, it's probably just some kind of broken thing. Fishy, fishy, you got any jacks? <laughs> Go fish. First TV, then people. Oh, end of the world again, eh, Kim? Well, I thought we were supposed to get uh, hit by one of those uh, meteoroids and all die of measles. Plague. Oh, yeah, right, Plague. We have abandoned our spiritual destiny. We are lured from the path by brightly colored boxes. But, uh, hey, hey. We are exposed as irrelevant. Devolving, dead? By the beheaded John the Baptist. Will you stop that? Sure, we got our problems here in Exceptional Vista, but that's only because the nut factory went bust. Now, I know this town will rebound back to the way it was, turning out the finest nuts in the western central northeast. Right, boys? Nature reclaims her dead. The reclaimers are coming. Well, now, howdy do thee there, Miss Sandy. Hi there, Mayor Claire. Deputy Dana, Messrs. Binkley and Hickey. How are you gentlemen today? Have you been experiencing reception problems? Darndest thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. A temporary atmospheric phenomenon, perhaps. Count on you to brighten up our day, Miss. Where'd you put the sponges this week, Mr. Binkley? Oh, uh, uh well, uh, they're just, uh... Just right down, down here to the, uh, just where the other personal treats. Gosh, you're just filled with girlish enthusiasm. <laughs> and why not? Dr. Carol Lamont, only the most brilliant atomic scientist at the Atomic Academy, has reserved a room at my motel. <laughs> He's coming tonight. He like fishing? Does he like girls? I certainly hope so. Or is he some kind of swan? Why is a man of science impressive when there is so little he understands? Oh, Kim. Sponges. $6.99. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Me. I'm afraid I'm all a Twitter today. I can see that. Is there to be a parade? Parade? 
Some sort of civic function staged to bolster a community's sense of belonging and shared purpose in difficult times. Hear him, <laughs> Dr. Carol Lamont. Uh, uh... Oh, don't be embarrassed about the magazine. Many men go through phases where their sexual interests take unusual directions, even non-perverts. Now, where are those sponges? I never considered that, Miss... Um... Oh, Fox. Sandy Fox. I run the Fox Den Motel. Where you'll be staying. Oh. I'm heading back there now. Um, maybe we could go together? All right, I'll follow you in my car. I'm on foot. I'll drive slowly. <laughs> okay. Oh, sponges. You and your kind will perish in hell! Patience in the heart of Jesus, kid. When are you gonna switch to decaf? Oh, you people can't see what's going on. His kind won't save you. They've turned our town into a spiritual wasteland, and now the reclaimers are coming to destroy us. Get him out of here, Deputy Dana. Oh, come on, Kim. Well, that's no way to welcome Dr. Carol Lamont, the atomic scientist. Oh, atomic, huh? Well, let me give you a full can of mackerel. Oh, no, thank no, you. No, come on, take one home for the little lady. Come on. Well, oh, actually, I'm, I'm not married. Come on, let's go. All right. You certainly don't talk like the other folks in this town. I read a lot. Oh, that's good. Well, not necessarily. I've read that it's possible to read too much. Hmm. On the other hand, if you didn't read, you wouldn't know that. My point, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, what brings you here? Vacation? Oh, yeah. Yes, I, I needed to slow down a bit, get back to nature, investigate the indigenous flora and the fauna. Good morning, Mrs. Bathgate. Good morning, Sandy. You will find it peaceful here. <laughs> a tad too peaceful, I fear. Ever since the nut factory shut down and moved to left hemisphere, we're barely hanging on. Good morning, Officer Gale. Morning, Beauty. I find it hard to believe that a famous scientist like yourself doesn't have at least a girlfriend or two. Oh. Uh, well, no. Uh, atomic scientists' life can be very lonely. There aren't many atomic lady scientists, after all. I sympathize. We've all experienced the crushing despair of loneliness. Sandy, see so you made a new friend. This is Dr. Carol Lamont from the Atomic Academy. How do you do, officer? Uh huh. Well, nowhere are a community's moral standards more keenly observed than in its officers of the law. Shall we? Kiss baby's boo boo. I was just carving up a new set of blocks. My old ones are almost worn out. 
Oh, that scientist fellow that you were wetting your whistle for, he checked in. Connie or Kathy or Cinderella or whatever. <laughs> Guy, this is Dr. Carol Lamont. Hello, Guy. It is? <clears throat> oh, honey, what's the matter? Well, it's just that the other guy was really creepy looking, and I figured that the joke was on you, but that's the atomic guy. He's, well, okay looking. Oh, honey, it's okay. You'll have to excuse my brother, Dr. Carol Lamont. He's rather protective of me. We've managed this motel together ever since our parents were killed in a terrible nut accident. Well, I. A tragic happenstance, to be sure. I miss them terribly. Oh, crap! That's the guy that I thought was Cinderella. Good morning, sir. And you are? Michelle O'Shea. I'm a traveling salesman. My territory includes Bladder Town, Left Hemisphere, Dunk, Right Hemisphere, Walkadogathon, New Imbroglio, and Fetus. <laughs> I specialize in vacuums. Well, there are never enough vacuums. Right you are. <laughs> Welcome to Exceptional Vista, Mr. O'Shea. I'm Sandy Fox. This is Dr. Carol Lamont, the world-famous atomic oh, scientist. Oh, please. I believe you've already met my brother, Guy. Will you be staying long? Oh, as long as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you will excuse me, I think I'll go for a walk. Yeah, he seems like a nice fellow. Well, let's get you a room. I can't believe I forgot my hiking boots and my underwear. Well, a world-famous atomic scientist has more important things on his mind. It's a good thing Mr. Binkley has a sale on hiking boots and underwear this week. That is a stroke of luck. <laughs> and I do appreciate your coming with me. Normally, my mother accompanies me on these ventures. What the dickens? Problem, officer? You atomic scientists. You can send men to the moon so you think stop signs don't apply to you. Oh dear, did I run a stop sign? I said you did. You saying you didn't? Well, your word is the law, officer. Damn correct. I tell you what, seeing as you and Beauty here are such good friends all of a sudden, I'll let you off with a warning. No, I, I can't accept that. I'm in breach of a local traffic ordinance. I must be fined accordingly. No. I'm going to forget about it for beauty's sake. Well, I insist. Look, I'm the policeman. I say what happens. You're just a citizen. And as a citizen, I am obliged to pay whatever fine the law... I said forget it, now forget it! Well, if you say so. Thank you for your kindness, Officer Gale. You've done Dr. Lamont a great service. Well, just so you know who's the boss... <laughs> a who? <laughs> so do you hear? Jan Bathgate's gone missing again. Again? Poor Shelley. <laughs> well, think I'll just go and police. <sighs> I'll see you tonight at dinner, beauty. Guys invited me. <laughs> so, shall we go try on that underwear? Thank you. So there's no one in town who understands the television tower circuit? The only person who did died last year. Bingo was his name. B-I-N-G-O? Jackie Bingo. Fell asleep one night watching TV, never woke up. Well, a sad thing. 
However, if there is a good way to pass on, that is certainly it. His dogs waited for him to nod off, then tore him to pieces. Well, it's time for Grace. Of course. They say that in Rupert's land they found Our Lady of Fatima's hat. Holy Mary, Mother of God, they found your hat. How did it come off your head? Did you drive in a convertible did a gust of wind take it away or were you eaten by aliens amen amen So, mm. Dr. Carol Lamont, tell us about your dreams, your hopes and aspirations. I dream of science and how it can save mankind. Save mankind, huh? From what? Oh, many things. Uh, for example, uh, one day soon we'll invent vaccines for such scourges as overpopulation, narcolepsy, horn in the head. Horn in the head? Horn in the head. How's a vaccine for horn in the head gonna save mankind? I'm quite right, Officer Gale. Defeating horn in the head alone won't suffice. There are much greater threats to our survival. Nature itself, for example. But how can that be? We control nature. Indeed, but the planet is becoming increasingly hostile to us, despite our best efforts to improve it through technology. Further research is required if we're to meet this trend of ingratitude head on. I, for one, have every confidence in you and your colleagues, Dr. Lamont. Well, thank you, Miss Fox, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> With faith such as yours, I'm sure science will prevail. I'm dying to know what it is you're working on at the Atomic Academy these days. <laughs> If you don't mind my asking. <laughs> oh, not at all, but I don't want to bore you people with a lot of scientific jabberwocky. <sighs> but if you insist. For the past five years, I've been doing experiments with cool fusion, and I feel I'm very close to a breakthrough. What the heck is cool fusion? Some kind of music? <laughs> no, no, no. No, Officer Gale. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. No. Cool fusion uh, has to do with the... Actually, may I borrow your pen? If, if we start with uh, two uh, small quark clusters like this, and we intercene the radiant... Oh, never mind. My theory is that since cold fusion is beyond our grasp, we need to pursue something less... cold, hence cool fusion. But the problem with cold fusion isn't the temperature, but the rate at which random electron deflection occurs during ion bonding in the nucleic shell. I'm sorry? I think what we should do is reduce the valence of the superconductors and increase the subatomic quark cluster via inverted level phasing. Here, here. Mm. I hope I haven't said something to upset you, Dr. Lamont. It's just a silly old idea I have based on a number of scientific journals I've perused. No, no, it's... It's fine. So, Beauty, what do you dream about? I dream of a time when the people of Exceptional Vista have dreams again. I have some pretty good ones. <laughs> okay, all. I'm talking about hope for the future, about a time when our town finds its heart again, when love can blossom and romance reigns on hot summer evenings, when lovers sweat, their bodies entwined, steamy, sweaty embraces, and Oh, Mr. O'Shea. 
Please, excuse my intrusion. I will be out for the rest of the evening, Miss Fox. I believe you know everyone here, except Officer Gale. Mr. O'Shea sells vacuums. Mm. My territory includes bladder town, left hemisphere, dunk, right hemisphere, walkadogathon, new imbroglio, and fetus. Fine, fellow. So, what are your plans for tomorrow? Well, actually, I thought I'd take a ten-mile speed walk. Why? Well, I was just wondering if you'd like to come to the lodge banquet tomorrow night. Lodge banquet? You wouldn't like it. That's just a bunch of guys in ceremonial regalia touching each other. In a ritualistic kind of way. I see. Will you be there, Sandy? Well, yes. <laughs> I'm Miss Exceptional Vista this year. I'll bet you are. And in that case, I accept. Jan, is that you? I'd like to check in, please. Yes. To register. I was just doing... <clears throat> I was just doing this new sewer snake thing with the sewer snake thing. We have a backwash problem, but uh, it's nothing to get worked up about, so... There's really no smell. I'd like to check in, please. traveling salesperson. I sell banjos. Do 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 He's the man, he's the guy, he's the apple in the lady's eye. Ooh ah uh, ooh ah uh. He can move, he can groove, he can do everything so smooth. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. <coughs> He's policeman Gale. He'll put you in jail. He will never fail, cause he's policeman Gale. Officer Gale. <laughs> 
do 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 Shelly, it's the apple of your eye. Shell? alive, Abby. I swear, girls, yesterday this fish was belly up, deader than a doornail. Look at her now. That's your basic resurrected fish. <laughs> What's more? Prima materia. Prime matter. See the gold specks? Weren't there yesterday. It's changing. Coal into gold. We've done it, girls. <laughs> Don't tell the men now. They'll ruin everything. Idiots. Doomsday is coming, all they can think about is sex and the size of their salmon. Oh. Would you look at that? If we can bring fish back to life, men should be no problem. <laughs> Stranger every day, always whispering. Can't say hello to them, but they don't look back like you were some kind of big purple bug. By Christ, Pierce Sides, a great party, huh, guy? <laughs> Judas hung, man. Why so glum? Strong. I say he's a swan. Oh, Dana. I wonder where he could be. He was supposed to be here. How's Guy handling having another man in your life? Dr. Lamont is not in my life. And as for what Guy thinks of him, ask Guy. Chris Marlowe, I sell banjos. And you are? Dr. Carol Lamont, atomic scientist at the Atomic Academy. A man of science. Well, yes. Is something wrong? I have to alert the authorities about a dead body I found in the hilly part of town outside. A dead body? Yes. Everyone's at the large banquet. Ah. Mind if I go with you? Not at all, Miss Marlowe. <laughs> But what in the 
world could have happened to Shelley Bathgate? Well, that's the $84 question, Beauty. I've been racking my brain back at the station trying to figure it out. Could be she just took out after Jan. But the blood. Yeah, the blood. Hey, maybe I could open an official investigation. Never done that before. Then you'd really see me in action. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Oh, but till I do, not a word about Shelley. Might be nothing. A scientist fella stood you up, huh? Doesn't surprise me. Dana pegged him for a swan straight away. <sighs> I'm worried about him. He should be here now with Mrs. Bathgate. There might be a killer on the loose. What if he's... Looks like your atomic man's found himself a date. Well, what do you know about that? Good evening, Miss Fox, Guy, Officer Gale. I was worried about you, but I see I had no reason to be. In case of point, in fact, you did. Good people, I've discovered the dead remains of a human corpse deceased in the lumpy part of town outside of town. <gasps> oh, my God. Crikey. Who was it? Difficult to say. There wasn't much left of... She, it. Well, we have to tell Mayor Claire. I agree. Well, where's the body now? Hmm. Directly where I found it. Anyone else have their suspicions about the clam dip? Mayor Claire, good evening. Well, I'll say. You doing anything special later, young lady? Dr. Lamont found a body in the lumpy part of town outside of town. Jesus, in Lazarus's tomb, you don't say. You remember where? Directly where I found it, yes. Well. Don't want to go ruining the party, and anyway, it's too dark out now. I say, first thing tomorrow, we head out. Fine. Would you care to cha-cha? Cha-cha? Oh. Gentlemen, lady, excuse us. Hi. I'm a policeman. Hello. I'm a mayor. body was scavenged by a wild animal. Its pattern of teeth marks is unusual. Anywhere from 200 to 202 teeth, but I can't be any more specific than that. As for cause of death, who's to say he wasn't eaten alive? What the heck's this? That's Jan Bathgate's undergarment. I'd know it anywhere. <laughs> Got that easy snap trap door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> St. Lawrence on a skewer, fellas. A man's entitled to experiment sexually in his golden years. Ah. Sorry, Mr. O'Shea, I came to clean. I'll come back. Oh, no, 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 please, please go right ahead. It will give us time to, uh, to talk. <laughs> talk? Hmm. Yes, I'm thinking of adding exceptional vista to my territory. Oh. Oh, that'd be nice. It's perfectly ideal. It's, it's so isolated. Prime. Virgin. 
territory. <laughs> we won't find anything useful here, boys. Who wants to bag them? Yeah, I figured. Did anybody lose toothpick? Gentlemen, we have to get to the motel. Sandy's alone and Michelle O'Shea is there. I think this is his toothpick. It's... Come on! Sandy? In the kitchen. Do it. Uh, I'm sorry. Is, is this your liver? I found it in the fridge. Is it not fresh? We were looking for San Miss Fox. Well, she went to get fresh kidneys. She said I could help myself to whatever was in the fridge. I see. <clears throat> Hi, fellas. Why so vexed? We think there may be a problem. What sort of problem? Well, Sam, we'll have to level with you. We found your toothpick. I'm sure he's got other toothpicks, Mayor Claire. We found it in the hilly, lumpy, bumpy part of town, outside of town, near Jan Bathgate's body. It's a clue. Oh my God, it was Jan? We, we think this guy's some kind of heinous, cold-blooded fiend. What are you implying? That you know something about Jan Bathgate's death. Or maybe where Shelly Bathgate is, too. What I'm about to tell you must go no further than this room. Speak your piece, son. I was in the hilly, lumpy, bumpy part of town, outside of town, investigating Mr. Bathgate's disappearance. Investigating why? Top secret, <gasps> national government. Hold it. Why send a government guy to investigate something that falls under local jurisdiction? This goes well beyond that. How far beyond? We think... And there may be something out there. Something that we've never dealt with before. Tell me, Dr. Lamont, had the body been predated? Pro what? Eaten? Yes. Very odd teeth marks. Yes. By the blessed fruit of Mary's womb, what do we do? We must do and say nothing. Your national government is on the case. Any interference from you will simply jeopardize their work. Now, there is an important transmission that I have to receive. Excuse me. See, Sandy? Everything will be all right. Once our government is in charge, no harm will come to us. Mm. Well, uh, you atomic guys got no backbone. What? I say we turn those things asses to grass with a blast of buck. I mean, if you don't, I will. I got backbone. Matter of fact, when I was born, I had a tail, too, and that's just more backbone, only it's furry. Simmer down, guy. We have our orders. Dr. Lamont is right. Let's just go about our business like good citizens. There's a good girl. Come on.
Miss Sam Fox. Just a moment, please. I was... Um... I'm sorry I startled you. That's quite all. But I can't find Guy. I think he went after that thing in the woods. Uh, he, he could be trying out his new... Uh set of blocks. I pray you're right. Or perhaps he went to ruminate in his tree fort. He ruminates frequently there. That could be it, yes. This I... is all so frightening. The dead bodies, the national government's secret investigation. I'm afraid. That's understandable. Um... Would you? Hmm? Could you? Huh? Hold me. All right. Looking for that beastie, only except I found the missy here, and uh, then I, I tripped over uh, I forget what I tripped over, and then I landed spying some guck, and then Mayor Claire was on the road, and now we're. You better take a look, see in the back there. That guck might be Shelly Bathgate. Pray for mercy from St. Blaze, because her throat has been ripped out, and most of the rest is inside out. <sighs> She's not winning any beauty contest, that's for sure. Hey, where's that scientist fella? He's in the room. Sandy's with him. What's all the commotion, people? You better take a gander here, Dr. Lamont. Shelly Bathgate. Oh, now what did that? Wolves? Mm. A hyena? Uh. An unusually large feral cat? No. These wounds are like those I found on her husband. I'd say we're dealing with one of Mr. O'Shea's mystery monsters. Oh, poor Shelly. First the rare case of leprosy, and now this. Mm, that's all right, Sandy. I think we all could use a good still drink. Let's get inside, think this through. I'm sure you find people. I reserve alcohol for medicinal purposes only. <laughs> and that's not to say I've never imbibed well beyond reasonable limits. Who hasn't, after all? I remember one time in particular at the astronomer's wine ball, there was the, the telescopes and the, the, a goat had gotten... Uh, oh, well, never mind. This uh, should settle all your frizzled nerves. Cheers. Proust. Stool. <laughs> I'd sure like to get an autopsy done. Is there an autopsy in town? We used to have one. Committed suicide. He filleted himself. Split his gut wide open, then sat down and filled out the paperwork before he keeled over. Now there was a solid citizen. I do the autopsies now. And I'm the autopsy assistant. This is my first week and my first dead person. I say Jan Bathgate killed Shelley, then did himself in a fit of remorse. You mean he ate her and then ate himself? Missy, what were you doing up there? Guy, what were you doing in the woods? 
Gee, Sandy, we gotta find these whatever they are things. She didn't say what she was up to. What were you up to? I was out for a walk. Officer Gale, no offense, and I'm sure there's none taken, but traveling salespersons aren't usually in the habit of eating their own customers. Now, can't you see you're making this nice girl nervous? Dr. Lamont, mm. we have to get Mr. O'Shea to tell us the whole truth about those things. Sandy, rule number one. If our leaders want to keep the truth from us, it's for our own good. Rule number two. But people are dying. Mm. Perhaps Mr. O'Shea will let us in on a secret if we help him out in some way. Officer Gale, how soon can you get that autopsy report? Depends. Good. Now, the other day at the general store, Kim Hickey was rambling on about something destroying us. He had a name for them, the Recliners, I believe. Reclaimers? Yes. Kim Hickey's a flake. Flake or no flake, we should talk to the man. Madmen sometimes speak the truth. I'll give you a lift. Good man. I'm coming with you. So am I. Absolutely not. It's too dangerous. You girls, stay here in the motel. Lock the doors, watch the windows, stay clothed. There's a good little soldier. Dr. Lamont. Yes. Be careful. I shall be. What the heck part of Shelley is that? Don't know. Could be pancreas. Yeah. There's the Isle of Langerham. <laughs> you know, Gail, I ain't never seen a naked woman before. At least not one I wasn't related. Miss Bentley? Kim? <laughs> oh. Jesus, curse and mock. Oh, gee. Oh, I didn't do it. I have the authority to arrest you, Kim. And as sure as Pontius Pilate, that's what I'm doing. You wouldn't listen. You wouldn't leave. Now the reclaimers have come. But you'll accuse me because you think I'm mad. Well, uh, yeah. Dr. Lamont, these people don't deserve to be wiped out. They used to be vibrant souls connected to the spirit. But you took that away. They're sick. <laughs> Can you hope to save them now? Well, I could test the canned goods for lead. You won't help them. Because you brought this upon their heads. You are mad. You said it yourself, Doc. Sometimes madmen speak the truth. Sometimes, not all the time. It might be one of those times. I'm not sure this is one of those times. It could be one of those times. I... The... Oh, I guess I'd better lock him up. Good man. I'll find Michelle O'Shea and catch up with you later. Mr. O'Shea, 
Death count has risen to three. I need to know what's going on. I'm sorry, I can't. You'll tell me the truth, or so help me. Gosh, government guy, I'm not. Oh. Dr. Lamont. Yes, tell me, please. Very well. Your government thinks there may be some sort of man-eating Sasquatch-type thing roaming the countryside. Dear Lord. Another theory is that a gang of genetically engineered serial killers is on the loose, possibly devil worshippers. A genetically engineered band of devil worshipping serial killers or a Sasquatch-type thing? I don't like the sound of that. Mm, well, whoever or whatever it is is very clever. Have you come up with anything? I suspect a local man, Kim Hickey. Mayor Claire has him in his custody. He seems a little unhinged. Kim Hickey, I mean. Mm. He may well be involved. I will interrogate him. Hey, Sandy, you'll never guess what I saw in the autopsy. Naked as a chamber. Sandy went out a half hour ago. Out? I thought I told you girls to stay here. She wanted to make a nice dinner for everyone. She went to look for some fresh mint. Mint? What else do you have with lamb? What, what if one of those, uh, things, what right. if they got her? Right. Well, she they probably up. chewed Stifled her up and they're picking their cake with a fibula. Having lamb. Shelly Bathgate was eaten. We gotta go find Sandy. Guy's right. Let's go. Stay here. Lock the doors. <sighs> Let me out, Dana. I can save you. Well, now, Kim, I'm not the one that needs to be saved. The reclaimers are coming. They're here. Dana, it's too late for many, but not for us. Not for those who sense what was lost and want it back. You know what you need, Kim? A real hot soup. Real nice cream of celery soup. Now, Dana. Things out there? They may not be things, Officer Gale. It's quite possible we're dealing with a species almost as intelligent as our own. We might even be able to communicate with them. Well, we better before they get Sandy. If they haven't already. Settle down now, Guy. I care for Sandy as much as you do. Oh, yeah? You think she'd let you do her laundry? Or hand wash her on her things? Well, now that would be up to her, Guy. You should be so lucky. She'd let me if I asked her to. No! She would, too. Please, gentlemen, suffice to say, we all care for Sandy. And I'm not saying that she would ever actually ask me to wash her under things for her. She wouldn't. She wouldn't let you either, Gail. She might. Just so you understand, she likes me a lot more than she likes you! Gentlemen, oh, yeah. please. Sandy's undergarments notwithstanding, I think we need to proceed. Officer Gale, head toward the ridge. Guy, follow along that crick. I'll head due north. We'll keep each other in sight. Let's move. Those two like me more than she likes them. Put just the right amount of softener in the wash, too. She never chased. You can ask her. Hey! Go! What's going on? What are you firing at? Some. some kind of monster! I didn't see it too good, but it was eating something. What the heck are you guys shooting at? Sandy could be out here. 
think she is? Dear God. What? Dear God, what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Mayor Claire. Last time I saw him, he was taking Kim Hickey to the police station. I didn't want to tell you boys this, but Leslie Binkley was eaten last night. Leslie Binkley once caught a fish the shape of my head. Everybody's being eaten. It's all right, guy. It's like some kind of, some kind of big eating things going on. And it's not Kim Hickey. Dana's keeping watch on him. Officer Gale, I think you should consider evacuating the town. Right. Steady, man, steady. We have to keep our wits around us and work together. We have to be men. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're right, Doc. Yes, I owe you an apology. Well, I haven't been too neighborly to you, yeah. but I see now that was just my own insecurities. Yeah. I'm just a small town cop. You're a well known atomic scientist. Hmm. We're men first, though, Gail. Above all else, we are men. This is Officer Gale calling Deputy Dana. Come in. Come in, Dana. We got trouble. Nothing. I think you'd better get back to town. We'll stay here and look for Sandy. Thanks, Doc. Good man. You people are lucky to have a fine policeman such as Officer Gale. What? Oh, I guess you didn't figure it out yet. Uh, see, um, when the nut factory went bust, all the people that could got out, even the police. All the police left? Uh, yeah. But Officer Gale is a real policeman. Cripes, of course not. He's completely crazy. But uh, we figured, you know, heck, what's the harm? Well, Deputy Dana, he, he's a real... Officer. No. He's Mayor Claire's loopy cousin. But the autopsies, Gale does the autopsies. Well, you know, there's autopsies and then there's autopsies. Sandy's hat. I made it myself. Out of birch bark and roadkill. Sandy! Die! Sandy! Die! 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 Stop it! Stop it! Stop over it! We could have died horribly. No guy, no. If I'm right, and God help us if I am, we may be the only people on Earth who stand between these creatures and worldwide predation. Worldwide what? Worldwide being eaten, guy. Unless we act quick, I fear that humans will no longer be at the top of the food chain. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm sorry. I'm okay. I'll do anything. Run really fast. Guy! Oh. Oh. 
into trouble. Save yourself. You're the only atomic scientist we got. I'm not leaving you here. Screwy. Where'd everybody go? Anyway, well, I guess that means it. he's all dead. Radios and the phones are out. They've taken all the weapons. If everybody's dead and all the guns are gone, how do we stand a chance? Well, we can't very well walk up to them holding a white flag, can we, guy? Wouldn't stay white for very long, for one. Something must be interfering with the radio signals. Interfering? How? My guess is some kind of interference created by the creatures. But they're just wild animals. I don't think so, Guy. What? The only explanation that makes sense is that we're dealing with moon men. Non-human beings from another planet. But Michelle O'Shea said... No, Guy. This could be one of those rare instances where our government is in error. We have to alert the authorities. We need to find a radio transmitter and break through the interference. Hey! What? Over at the Bathgate house, they have a satellite dish on the roof. Good man, Guy. Come on. Lead the way, Guy. in the woods, looking for a mint. We were having lamb. I'm afraid I came up behind you. I startled you. Yes, I heard you. I thought you were one of those things. I ran. You tripped, bumped your head, blacked out. I brought you here. You were mumbling something about a fat lady's hat. Our Lady of Fatima. I dreamt she'd lost her hat. I told her I was scared, but she told me not to fear, because God has extra hats. <laughs> and then I woke up, and you were here with food and wine. <laughs> well, that just about covers it. Contact the others, the creatures are out there. All means of communication are gone. We can't risk leaving the house. Whoever is left will simply have to fend for themselves. Sandy! 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 
Or something. No, he hasn't got rabies, guy. He's in some sort of post-scared state. Gale! Gale! Gale, man! We're going to send a signal. We need your help. Oh, dear. Come on. You're not a government agent, are you? No. I'm not. You are. You look at some kind of space alien. It's your accent. Yes. I'm their leader. Why are you doing this to us? It's quite simple, really. Our planet is short of food. We're here on a taste test. And you really are a most delicious species. Full of nourishment, high in cholesterol, low in fiber. We will farm you. But just at the moment, I'm feeling rather... peckish. Hey, there's somebody at the bathgate place. Good evening. Would you like to perform the copulatory act with me? The what? Copulation guy. Coitus. Procreation. Sexual interspores. Moon girl. Cripes girls do.
Oh my. Never been kissed before. Oh, well, uh, technically speaking, I, uh, there was Michelle, he's dead. Oh. I'm not sure of some kind of how the heck did guy get a picture? It was the little guy nailed to the wall. Oh, oh dear. Come along. I'm TJC. Oh. What's the matter with Guy? I'm not sure. Some kind of postcranial bang syndrome. We'll never get him out of here like that. We'll have to take our chances here. But I must tell you, our chances are not very good, I'm afraid. As long as I'm with you, I'm happy. Happy? I make you happy? I... I love you, Dr. Lamont. Creatures could ever share a moment like this to know love. I love you, Dr. Lamont. Oh. No, you, Miss Fox. Sandy. Sandy. Oh. Yeah. Mother? Father? Is that you pulled from the lake? Miss Marlowe, what are you doing here? It appears that Miss Marlowe is not the banjo salesperson she pretends to be. You're with the post office? Of course not. But I am with the government. And why haven't you sent for the army? The creatures, they're here to eat us. Mr. O'Shea told me he's their president or something. Of course. A humanoid eating predator race of moon men and girls? They must be here to breed and farm us. I believe the phrase is human farmer people. And you knew. I was sent to monitor the situation. <gasps> Help us stop them. That would be counterproductive to our needs. They just need to see how powerful the aliens are. Were there guinea pigs? The people in this town have made themselves expendable. Why, you... Get back! It's more than that, isn't it? I want to capture their advanced space rocket and its hyper-advanced scientific advances and advanced weaponry. Our national leader doesn't know about this traitorous Jezebel, daughter of Satan, perfidious she-bitch. Oh. Marla, will you fight with us or against us? I'm not going to die. If we work together, that won't happen. <laughs> Type of cramp. They're dying! It's a TV signal! Of course. To 
television signals kill them. That's why the Moon Men set up the interference field. And girls, avert your eyes, they're hideous. So now, all we have to do is, all we have to do. Jesus says, try cool fusion. Mm. Yes, if the crucifix could fuse the circuits on the satellite dish, we'd create a cool fusion reaction and convert the dish into a transmitter which would reactivate the retransmission tower and give us enough power to break through the interference. But that would take a miracle. I says Jesus, there's the rub. We need to get to the roof. But the aliens. But the aliens? Headbutt them, you mean? Well, yes, that might work in the short term. No, they may be waiting for us. It's a chance we have to take. Come on. Watch the hole. Oh, dear. Still dead. I forgot the, uh, that. Guy, stay here, and you'll get another one of those later. Guy? We love you. as long as I can. But they'll kill you. Go, Sandy. And eat you alive. Go, Sandy. I send warm salutations from all Earthlings throughout the land, and uh, in whose name I welcome you to our beautiful planet. Here, um, many interesting uh, flora and uh, fauna can be found. I found the terminals, Dr. Lamont. Hang on! The skunk is a wily little thing. which can be found in three uh, three varieties. Uh, uh, one uh, striped, two hog-nosed, and uh, three French. Thank you. Please come again. And they're up. Dr. Lamont breaks them back on the inside. Moon man number one second as they get away. And it's Moon Girl number two third as they round the front porch. Hurry! Oh.
Dr. Lamont. Sandy! Miss Fox! Huh? Unbelievable good luck! Oh, well, Michelle O'Shea, he wasn't dead after all, but his head came off somehow, and his arms are strange, slimy, and he must have been so depressed, he jumped off the roof! Well, actually, I... Uh... And I think my pursuers... Well, I don't know what became of them, truth be told, but... How are you doing with those terminals? I have a moment if you require technical instruction. Well, that won't be necessary, Dr. Lamont. Why don't you come up and see for yourself? Oh. Ah. All right. Tell you, Les, it's a darn good thing the lady folk figured out that resurrection thing in time, or we'd have missed this fine festivity. <laughs> yep, got to hand it to the gals resurrecting us. To the lot of folk. <laughs> Those girls can bring me back from the dead any day. Sandy Carl, Carol! <laughs> it's like a dream come true. Exceptional vistas reborn. Isn't it fine? Us three getting married. All the folks from Exceptional Vista coming back to give it another go? Yes, Guy. Together we'll get that nut factory back on its feet. Sure will. Oh, by the by, Dr. Lamont, I hand washed all your under things and folded them just perfect. You'll see I did a heck of a job. Uh, you won't chafe or nothing. I'm sure I won't, Guy. And I gave that rubber he-she friend of yours a good posing down, <laughs> too. <laughs> That's fine, Guy. <sighs> something wrong? No, I was just thinking. We have no idea how to destroy the invaders, yet the means to do so lay directly beneath our noses in every home. It wasn't just television, was it, Dr. Lamont? I doubt that very much, Sandy. Please call me Carol. Hmm. For God, in his infinite wisdom, creator of all things, including space invaders, though obviously he likes us better, bestowed television upon mankind. Harmless to us, deadly to those who would destroy us in exchange for which he demands only our unquestioning faith. Take heed. Take heed. <laughs>
found Our Lady of Fatima's hat, Holy Mary, Mother of God, they found your hat, how did it come 